And we now have the MECO 2 plus 3 second open. Once again, the pre flight predictions compared to actual show a very good agreement and an excellent orbit achieved at MECO 2. Centaur has completed its turn to the spacecraft separation attitude. Centaur has begun to ramp from a 50% duty cycle to a 10% duty cycle. Signatures look good. And from the Mission Director Center, we're in about uh, a nine-minute coast phase before a spacecraft separation. And I'm joined right now by Bruce Bannard of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And Bruce, can you tell me a little bit about the InSight mission and what your role is with this? Well, uh, I'm the principal investigator of the mission and sort of uh, in charge of the overall uh, success, the scientific success of the mission. And so I have to kind of oversee all the different aspects of it with a, an eye towards uh, making sure that it's going to do the science that uh, that we propose to do that, uh, that we've uh, basically been tasked by NASA to, to provide from this mission. And what is the, what is the primary science objective for, for the InSight? Well, the InSight is going to go to Mars to uh, look beneath the surface and make the first map of the inside of Mars. Uh, we're going to delineate the, the, the thickness of the crust, the size of the core, uh, the internal composition, and use those, uh, those measurements to inform our models of uh, planetary formation, planetary uh, differentiation, and, and uh, how the planets, the rocky planets, start out and perhaps understand how why some planets take a, a path that uh, uh, becomes uh, 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 a habitable planet like the Earth, and others take a path that becomes uh, uh, not habitable like, say, Venus or, or, or Mars. So we're going to learn about, uh, by studying Mars, we can also learn about our own home planet. That's, that's, exactly, what we're, that's exactly what we're trying to do, yes. And so how long does it take for the spacecraft to, to get to the surface of Mars? Uh, well, we, we have about a six-and-a-half-month cruise from, from here, uh, and then once we get to Mars, um, we, when we enter the atmosphere of Mars, from there it takes about six and a half minutes to get to the bottom of the, of the atmosphere and land on, on the surface. So it's, uh, it's, uh, they're both six and a half, but there's a little bit difference in, uh, in, in scale there. And how long will InSight be uh, doing its science on the surface of Mars? Well, we plan to take about the first two or three months to uh, get the instruments to deploy. They're bolted to the top of the, of, the, of the spacecraft, and we want to get them down on the ground. Our main instrument is a seismometer and a heat flow probe, and those both need to be on the ground in order to do their job. And so we have a, a whole process for uh, in placing them on the ground and getting them ready to go. And once they're operating, we intend to, to uh, make our measurements for about one Mars year, which is equivalent to two Earth years. And can you tell me a little bit more about Mars quakes and maybe what you expect to learn from those? Well, Mars quakes are just the, the Martian equivalent of earthquakes that we have on the Earth. And so uh, when the uh, there, uh, forces build up in the crust, it causes the crust to break or crack. And when that snaps a little bit, it sends vibrations through the planet. And those uh, on, on the Earth, you know, especially uh, those of us who live in California, we're very familiar with the, the shaking of the, of the ground due to, due to earthquakes. Uh, but what a lot of people don't realize is that uh, the very sensitive um, instruments that we have, the seismometers that we have, are, are measuring uh, earthquakes all the time uh, in, in California. Not only do we measure the shakes that, that uh, you might feel your, yourself, but we're measuring uh, vibrations from quakes in, across the ocean in Japan, uh, in Europe, all over the world. And uh, for scientists, those quakes are 
uh, they're like flash bulbs they're they're lighting up the inside in the sense that as those waves go through the planet they're picking up information they're affected by the material that they move through and uh, when they come back up and we measure them with our seismometers uh, we're able to analyze those waves and pull out that information that the waves have picked up along the path and we can put together a 3d uh, image basically a 3d look at the inside of the planet and we hope to do that same sort of thing at mars we've been doing it on the earth for about 125 years now and so on mars uh the inside of mars is basically completely unknown we know that that it has an iron core we know that it has a crust we have some fuzzy idea from uh, theoretical measurements or theoretical models about how big those things are but they've never been measured and insight will actually measure uh, those quantities for the very first time and so being here on launch day and now having it having it launched how how do you feel at this point um Right now, I feel a little bit drained because it's been so exciting all day long. It's the, the anticipation's been, been building up. Uh, we uh, rolled the tower back from the, the, the spacecraft about four hours before launch, and, and, and suddenly, you know, this beautiful rocket with InSight standing on top was exposed and, and lit up in the night, in, in the night sky. And uh, that was, uh, that was a, quite a moment. Then we came back here, and the countdown comes down, and as you get closer and closer to, to uh, the liftoff. You know, there's, there's more and more activity. More and more things are, are, are happening, and, uh, well, you know, valves are closing, and tanks are, are pe- pressurizing, and then you get down to, 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 uh, to zero. The thing goes off, and it's just so exciting, so intensely exciting. And now we're waiting to sort of finish our launch. We're not actually done with launch until we separate from, uh, from the Centaur. And separation coming up here very shortly. Mm-hmm. So we can, uh, we, can, we can hold for that. Okay. And we have indication of spacecraft seven. That confirmation of spacecraft separation behind us in the room. Uh, a lot of excited people. Now I have a short coast of approximately 34 seconds. Before we You're separate looking at NASA Launch Manager Marco Tim Dunn. A. This will be the first pair of CubeSats to go to deep space. They carry radio, high gain antenna, and propulsion system with the goal to provide data relay to the Earth from the entry, descent, and landing phase of the InSight mission. And just moments away from the first two CubeSats to deploy. And we have the first Marco A spacecraft separation. Centaur is now spinning up. First half of the 180 degree turn. Centaur has completed the turn. Now in an attitude hold for spacecraft separation. And we have indication of Marco B being deployed. And the second of two CubeSats has been deployed. Centaur has begun the custom CCAM turn. And a lot of handshaking going on in Atlas Launch Control as the inside spacecraft is separated along with the two Marco CubeSat also bound for Mars. Looking at a live view inside NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And we now have the InSight separation open. And as all the other opens were, the actuals are very close to the pre-flight predictions and excellent orbit for the InSight spacecraft. 
with that, this completes the plus count commentary for the AV-78 InSight mission. And attention all stations on Countdown 2. The NASA Administrator will be coming online shortly for a few comments for the launch team. Sir, you're active on Countdown 2. Pass, can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Bridenstine, this is yep. Tim Dunn with the InSight Launch Team at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Well, hello, Jim. How are you? I'm doing just fine, sir. Well, am I live for the audience? You are live, and we've got the entire launch team dialed in, listening to you on our countdown channel. Oh, well, thank you so much, Jim. It's, uh, it's an honor to be able to, to talk to the whole team there. I want to start by thanking the, um, everybody who's worked on this for such a, a long period of time. I know this isn't something that you put together on a, on a Saturday morning, but this has been years of work by a whole host of people for a very long time, including JPL and, of course, the launch crew at Vandenberg. I want to give a, a special thanks to, to ULA and congratulate them on 128 total successful launches in a row. Uh, 78 specifically for the Atlas V. I want to thank our international partners, Kness and DLR, for their hard work. Um, this, is a, this is a big day. We're going back to Mars. We're, we, we did it from the West Coast, which is a first ever. Uh, we're going to look deep inside the interior of Mars. We're going to create a 3D image of what's going on inside of Mars and, of course, the launch of our first CubeSats into deep space. Um, these, this, this is an extraordinary mission with a whole host of firsts. It's important for our country. It's also important for the world. Um, and it really establishes American leadership in, 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 a, in a lot of ways. And I just wanted, uh, Jim, to make sure everybody knew how grateful we are here at the headquarters, and especially me, since this was my first launch as the, the NASA administrator, um, that everything went so well. And uh, congratulations to everybody involved. Uh, if it's okay, I'd also like to, uh, to introduce the team there um, to Thomas Zerbukin, whom I know many of you know. Um, he's the Associate Administrator of the Science Mission Directorate here in the headquarters, and uh, I'll let him address you as well. Well, thanks so much, uh, Jim. I'm just really excited, just like you, uh, enjoying a great morning and, you know, crossing fingers and living through everything, all the uh, animations, and, of course, uh, also the explanations that we got from the team both on camera and in the room. And I just wanted to thank the a whole team. This is a team effort, like you just said. But also, I wanted to tell you how much we're looking forward to doing the science and doing all this harvesting of everything we've been dreaming about in the last few years through all the 
sometimes agony putting these things together, like these space missions are. They're hard. That's why we do them, not because they're easy. And I, I just look forward to uh, what we're going to learn from this uh, amazing mission once we arrive uh, on the other side of this journey. Thanks, Jim. That is awesome. Well, well thank you, Thomas. And, uh, Jim, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to address everybody there. And, um, and it's a, a, again, congratulations on a very successful launch. Well, thank you so much, sir, for taking time to speak to the team. It means a lot to us. If you were watching the video, you probably saw the level of excitement out here. Uh, we are thrilled to be part of a first-ever launch from the West Coast going interplanetary. And thank you and Mr. Zerbukin for taking time to speak to us this morning. Awesome. Congratulations. You guys have a great day. We will. And as you just heard, that was our new NASA administrator talking to the launch team after a successful acquisition of signal from the InSight spacecraft. Great to hear from our new administrator, and you can follow him on Twitter at, at Jim Bridenstine. Tonight's launch of the Atlas V with InSight happened at 4.05 a.m. Pacific time. The InSight spacecraft and the two Marco spacecraft were separated. It's been a great night here from the Mission Director Center at Vandenberg Air Force Base. And with that, we'll now go back to Stephanie Martin. Stephanie? Thanks, Josh. It was a beautiful launch tonight, and I believe that we have a recap of tonight's launch with Josh and Blair from NASA EDGE. Guys? Hey, thanks, Stephanie. Uh, I tell you what, it was, it's, been a, it's been a great day. Yes, absolutely. A great launch. Uh, it was great to hear from, uh, from the NASA Administrator, from the Associate Administrator for Science Mission Director, and from Tim Dunn, the Launch Director, uh, on, on a job well done to the InSight team and to the Marco team. Well, and of course, we've also heard for a lot from the, the principal investigators, the deputy principal investigator. That's right. Uh, very exciting stuff going on. And as you heard mentioned several times, a lot of enthusiasm. I mean, look, people have been out here for hours into the wee hours of the early morning, and uh, the enthusiasm is keeping everybody on point. You know, for, for us, Stephanie, it's... It, it, for us, Stephanie, it's been you know uh, from the the rollout, uh, rollback of the of the uh, mobile uh, service uh, platform, and then uh, seeing you know the rocket uh, out the pad, it was really cool. Uh, and then to to kind of wait you know those three four hours to get excited for the launch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and to and to talk to five hour Jim Green, who is <laughs> he's just full of energy and yeah, excitement, yeah. and and it just really makes you. Uh, get really excited about planetary uh, science and, and learning more about Mars. Yeah, no, that was, was cool. I mean, we didn't actually see the launch because of the fog, but That's you okay. felt it. You right. know, it was it was palpable. It was tactile. That's right. And, and, mean, and, and, and so now we have spacecraft separation, Marco, InSight, it's on its way to Mars, and now we just have to wait till November 26th. That's right. And, and of course, uh, Marco will be right there with them to get data from the, from the ground. Yeah. Can't wait. Stephanie, it's been a great day, a great launch, and uh, we're looking forward to the to landing of Insight. Back and to you. Keep, keep the energy going. Thank you both. Tori McClendon is standing by in the Remote Launch Control Center with a very excited launch director. Tori? There we go. Thank you, Stephanie. All right, Tim. So I know how excited you and your team has been for this long-awaited day. Uh, tell us how it went today. <laughs> wow. So we just had spacecraft separation. <laughs> I mean, it's thrilling. We got a spacecraft on its way to Mars. Uh, it's been a, an incredible day, night, morning. Uh, it's been it's been a long uh, long evening for us. Been up for a long time. Yes, we but have. Uh, it was a actually an incredibly smooth countdown. Uh, weather here on the Central California coast. I know, except for the fog, it was incredible. Uh, Apologize for the visibility, the low vis of the viewers, but I hear it put on quite a show for sound. Apparently, it did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, so uh, all the weather constraints were met. Uh, even the visibility constraint that got a lot of discussion over the last couple of days. Uh, the range assets here at the 30th Space Wing at Vandenberg Air Force Base performed exceptionally well. No problems there. Uh, we woke the spacecraft up about 45 minutes before launch. It woke up on time, and uh, it was did not have one bit of problem from the spacecraft. Uh, and then the launch vehicle, uh, the mighty Atlas, performed yet again. 
Uh, we had a little bit of discussion early in the countdown about a ground system valve. We worked through that, no problems. And then late in the count, we had a few alarms that uh, we needed to spend a little bit of time, understood those. They were not actual real alarms about the rocket. So that took us right up to about uh, L minus, so six minutes or so. And uh, and then from then on, it was smooth sailing down to T0, right on time at the opening of the window. Uh, the ULA launch team demonstrated once again what an incredible team they are. And uh, the NASA team that came alongside ULA, I'm just uh, a small part of that team and incredibly proud to work for the Launch Services Program team. And then certainly our customer from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory that actually uh, did all of the hard, heavy lifting with the InSight spacecraft. Lockheed Martin built the spacecraft in Denver. JPL worked alongside them. So just on all sides, just an incredible team. And if you saw any of the video of us in the control room uh, celebrating, it's just it's what a relief to have a mission success, a spacecraft on its way, happy, healthy. We've acquired this, the first telemetry signals from InSight already, so we know it's doing well. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you both. This concludes our live launch coverage of the United Launch Alliance's Atlas V rocket with NASA's InSight and Marco spacecraft which are heading to Mars. For more information, please visit www.nasa.gov forward slash insight. I'm Stephanie Martin. From all of us here at Vandenberg Air Force Base, thank you for joining us.